when there's a new bird in the flock, sometimes that can cause a ripple to the flock that can be felt. How does a new bird change the flock? What should you expect when you bring a new bird home? And what can you do about it? Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parapolis Bond and the book Get to Know African Grey and Cape Parrots, both available on Amazon. My third book, the picture book, coming out real soon on Amazon. Today we're gonna to talk about what it's like when you add a new parrot. We're gonna show you some video footage of one of my YouTube members who brought a new blue and gold macaw home and it's changing things. And so we'll have Mateo share with us to show us what we can do with Ricky and Roxy. You want bellies? There's bellies. There's bellies. She's mom, give me bellies. She's mom, give me bellies. She, she, she. She's mom, give me bellies. Mom, give me bellies. Give me bellies, mommy. When we bring a new bird home, one of the things that happens is it's sort of like bringing a third person into the relationship. That third wheel might work, but in a lot of cases, someone's gonna be left out. So that third wheel makes for an uneven structure. So when we bring a new bird home, the flock does tend to change. One of the things that happens is a new pecking order is now going to be established whether we like it or not. And some of us, your current birds are going to feel a little insecure and a little threatened. It's natural. It will re rebalance out. What you want to do is you want to make sure you make it through the adjustment period because as you're adjusting, of course, some birds might get their feathers all in a fluff or in Zeus's case, plucked. Don't worry, I adopted him as a plucker and he hasn't really changed, except now he's plucked his tail feathers but there's something neurologic going on with Zeus. My vet's working with him. Now, what's going on in this video? You could see that Roxy, the new blue and gold, is happy, she's fine. There's like only signs of happiness. On the other hand, if we look at Ricky, Ricky is doing some things that are telling us that Ricky is not happy. Ricky is walking on top of his cage going my territory i'm the biggest feather here he's puffing up his feathers he's walking around like he owns the joint because he did <laughs> right he's like this is mine that new bird i don't know one thing that i would do in this scenario they're both in the same bird room which i think is fantastic but if Mateo isn't already currently covering the cages at night, which he probably is, I would really be sure to cover the cages. And I would also get some wood. I like getting wood panels that are thin. Uh, and I like hanging them on one side of the cage a lot of the time. PVC is even better because PVC can be cleaned so easily. Wood can get dirty and we have to keep our eyes on it so we don't spread bacteria. But when we do that and we give our new parrot one side of privacy, within the full cage. Our parrot can go to the side where they can see through the wood and see me, or they can come to the side where they can't see through the paneling and they can get a break and they can feel like they're not being watched. And the, the bird who already lived here and who's, you know, walking around like he owns the place, you know, we can get a break from that if need be. So that's one way to help reduce some of the stress. I know this is going to sound a little silly, but another way is I would really talk to Ricky, my existing bird, and I would let my existing bird know, you know, I got this bird in part for you. I want you to have a friend. It's a macaw like you, but it doesn't mean anything changes. I still love you. You're still special. And to help Ricky see this, I would take some special time, take Ricky out of that room, and go spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Ricky so that Ricky feels the connection, feels like it's not lost, feels like there's someone new, but it doesn't mean that our connection is gone. You know, it can help um, increase a sense of security with Ricky. That's real important, right? The third thing is I would always make sure to give out treats equally. And I would let both birds see that I'm giving them each a treat. 
As a matter of fact, during this adjustment time, I'd bend the rules a little and I would give out maybe something sweet that they like, fruit kind of thing, or some other treat, whatever it might be, millet, whatever it is that you know that both parrots are gonna like and I would be really, really um, pronounced about making sure that they see that I'm giving it out equally. No, I don't think parrots sit and judge that. Yes, my parrots, when I walk up to the kite cage and I give one, for example, a pistachio, the other one waits patiently because the other one knows that I do not bring one pistachio. I always bring two. They know that I treat them both equally. They know that I love them both. And so I would try to make that clear to my old macaw and my new macaw as much as I possibly could to help them, like I said, ease in, help them really adjust and help them feel more comfortable. It is gonna be a matter of time. The next thing I would do is I would take both birds to a common space. If the bird room, if this is the bird room and Ricky, our current bird, is comfortable, uh, you know, you might be able to bring the new bird out and have them spend time together. You might not because Ricky seems like he is trying to show that he owns everything. If it hasn't already gotten better, where do you want to go? If I felt like Ricky was sort of acting like he owns everything in this room, then I would bring them and bring a perch into a common room, maybe two perches, and let them be in a space that neither of them has claimed so that they have equal footing and the three of us can try to hang out there or the four of us if there's two humans, you know, whatever the case may be. It just takes some reassuring and some time. Now, there are cases where you're just not going to be able to have two parents together, no matter what. For example, my Indian ringneck Milo, she's a little fierce, and I'm really careful about who she can be around, when she can be out, because she's a little fierce. There's other birds like my male Indian ringneck, Jules, who can be out all the time. I don't care if, you know, what he does, I don't care where he goes, he doesn't cause me any problems. So you do wind up with some birds. I have some conures that are more aggressive and they just can't be out with certain other conures or certain other birds. I really get to know my parents' personalities and I, I know who can be out with who, who can't, and we have to rotate who comes out accordingly. Not for any reason other than I don't want anyone hurt and I already know who's friendly and sweet and not gonna cause problems, who's gonna be peaceful and who's gonna be a little Napoleon and cause me problems that I don't wanna experience. So you have to get to know the temperament of the new bird. You have to understand and be understanding with the temperament of the old bird. The old bird, nothing, he or she isn't doing anything wrong. They are simply feeling insecure because there's a new bird, but they will adjust. And whether you have to keep them in separate cages forever or more likely not, it's just a matter of time. Even when you do have to keep them in separate cages, generally speaking, when they are in their separate cages, they do calm down. You just can't let them out together. And that can happen. You know, I've, I've had birds, like I said, where that's certainly been the case. But as you watch and as you try to really establish equal footing, try to really establish that everyone is the same in the flock, meaning that I love Zeus as much as I love Hera back there, then Oh, can you see Hera? <laughs> then your birds are gonna get a good sense of that. When you're at the top of the pecking order and you say, we're nice to everyone, they're far more likely to listen. When you're not at the top of the pecking order, if you're scared of your new parrot, you are gonna have a more challenging time. And at that point, I recommend training or something so that you can get more used to your bird and you're comfortable with your bird and you can keep what Caesar calls, Caesar Milan calls that calm, confident energy in yourself that lets you let them know that you're taking care of things and you're at the top of the pecking order because then you get to say and we're all nice to each other and that's the way it goes and then it's far more likely far far more likely to go that way thank you for joining me in this blissful video if you want some awesome parrot merch please be sure to visit shop.parrotbliss.com and if you want to hang out with some of my youtube members and i on discord plus 
get an extra video every week, be sure to join my membership at parablist.com. At the top of the banner, hit groups. Hello. See you next time. Bye.